Welcome to Memphis Light, Gas and Waters, Power Up Memphis. I'm your host, Gail Jones Carson, the Vice President of Community and External Affairs. The aim of Power Up Memphis is to take you, our customers, on an inside tour of MLGW to share our programs and operations with you, our customers. And by doing so, we can all better understand how we function as your utility provider. My first guest on Power Up Memphis today is Tony Rosser, who is the manager of corporate security for Memphis Light, Gas, and Water. Welcome, Tony. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Okay, so today uh, on this segment, we're going to be discussing new security measures at Memphis Light, Gas, and Water. Uh, July 2017, the state legislature passed or imp began implementation of some new security measures uh, for the state of Tennessee, which basically stated that uh, people who have gun permits can carry guns into uh, public facilities. However, if those government uh, governmental facilities um, or businesses have uh, put in security measures like training uh, and metal detectors, then it was uh, people cannot come on to governmental properties like Memphis Light, like Gas, and Water. Even though they have a gun permit, they cannot bring weapons onto our property. So July uh, 9th of this year, MLGW uh, made effective uh, anyone with guns or weapons, they would not be able to come onto our property uh, even though they may have permits because we now have new security measures like metal detectors. Our security staff have been more trained to uh, deal with these kind of issues. So Tony, could you tell us more about what the security area has done uh, what, about you know, when it comes to implementing these new measures for safety measures, I might say, for our customers. Sure. Well, yeah. and they're not just safety measures for our customers, they're also safety measures for our employees. employees. Well, prior to uh, this bill going into effect, which is House Bill 508, which uh, effectively says that if uh, any public entity that allows the public to come in into, mm -hmm. we cannot prohibit handgun carrying permit carriers to come in with their weapons. Um, to uh, allow us to, to disallow that, uh, we have to have in place these uh, metal detectors and we have to have a, a trained officer as well to uh, um, search individuals in the event that uh, we think that they're carrying weapons. And so we, do we put in uh, metal detectors and these specially trained officers in all of our facilities? We only put them in facilities where the public is allowed to enter. Um, that would be the uh, pavement offices, uh, we have five payment centers and uh, as well as the administration building. Okay, so how did this impact our operations or how does this impact our customers dealing, doing business with Memphis like Gas Water as they come into our facilities? Yeah, it should have had very little impact on them. It, uh, it delayed them uh, initially. Uh, the first month or so, you know, everybody has to get used to to, to the changes. But now everything seems to be, seems to be flowing rather smoothly. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had some days we were uh, where the first of the month and the 15th of the month are the challenging periods of the month where we've got large crowds at the beginning of the day. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we put enough officers uh, out at the locations to effectively get the people in and allow them to go ahead and pay the bills and get out as quickly as they possibly could. Well, how well received has this been by our customers? Uh, we've had mixed emotions. Um, for the most part, they're, they're very cooperative. Um, and every now and then we, we have someone who uh, is, is, hasn't been coming to the offices and they didn't know the procedures there. They didn't know it would be a timely uh, delay. Um, and we have customers who still attempt to bring weapons in. And, uh, well, yeah, how do we, you handle those situations? Well, we simply, if they, if they have handgun carrying permits, of course, we just ask them to return to, return to their cars or vehicles or, um, or to give them to someone who's with them that can hang on to it for them. Um, but for the most part, we, we have no trouble out of them. They, they are uh, law-abiding citizens, and, uh, and they're, they're familiar with the laws. And uh, a lot of them know that this law is in effect, but they just simply forget to leave the weapon in their vehicle or someplace secure. Oh, okay. Uh, so tell me, um, 
how have the employees, how, how has this impacted our operations with our employees? Well, zero impact on employees. I think they've, they've been very receptive to it. Um, employees are not searched. They do not have to go through the metal detectors. Okay. Um, but so there's, there's really zero impact on them. It doesn't, doesn't slow them down as far as coming to work on time or anything like that. And uh, initially, uh, we thought we might have to uh, uh, allow the uh, employees to go through the metal detectors as well. But uh, they, we, uh, that decision was changed later on. Okay. So while we're on, is there anything else you want to discuss that our customers need to know regarding these new well, security you know, this, measures? Well, this, this is all part of, of our, our safety initiative. We, uh, we went out to all the, all the work centers uh, in the second quarter, and we pr presented our workplace violence segment and uh, introduced uh, as our employees uh, to the fact that, uh, that they should be safe in the workplace because of the workplace violence laws that are in effect. Uh, and, uh, and we introduced them to um, some of the um, um, procedures that we would expect them to follow in the event of an active shooter type situation. So, I mean, we've had active shooter situations going on all over the country, it seems, I mean, this last year or so, and it seems like it's increasing, not just in the workplace, but just in public mm -hmm. places in general. So has Light Gas and Water ever had a situation where we uh, had an active shooter or a threat of an active shooter? No, we've not had an active shooter uh, at, at MLGW. We've had an individual who um, had some emotional problems and he took his problems home and I believe he uh, assaulted his mother and father and, and I think he even assaulted himself uh, as a result of that. But nothing on MLGW property has occurred so far. So what kind of, uh, you mentioned some training what kind of training um, do you all provide to our employees in the event uh, that there is an active shooter or that there is violence in the workplace? How do we uh, work with our employees on that kind of uh, information and training? Well, the latest uh, initiative by uh, law enforcement is, is the run, hide, fight response to the active shooter type situation. Mm -hmm. um, and there, it's pretty self-explanatory. In the event that we hear shots fired, we encourage employees to actually run from the scene uh, mm -hmm. until, until they reach a place of safety. Um, if they are, do not have an opportunity to run, then we uh, to advise them to bunker down, close doors, lock the doors, um, turn the cell phones off, turn the lights off, and try to hide. Okay, it's pretty self-explanatory as well. And of course, the, the fight uh, is just, you know, simply fight for your life. Uh, when the intruder comes into your office, uh, get any kind of weapon that you can possibly get in your hand, into your hands and, uh, and defend yourself. Well, I was in a meeting and um, it did come up about the fight for your life situation because I, I thought that was just interesting that, so that is the best defense is to fight as opposed to <laughs> um, the, the, <laughs> paying the ultimate price. I mean, if, if, the, if the intruder is indeed an active shooter, the active shooter's purpose is to uh, assault or kill as many people as they possibly can. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's either fight or become a victim. Okay. Well, I, that, that, I mean, when I heard that, I, it, I was kind of surprised, but it, it makes sense, mm -hmm. um, I guess, to fight. Right. But we, we train our employees, Gail, to look out for some of the warning signs. And warning signs, there's, there's so many of them. And, and I, I kind of laughingly say, look for the individual who just doesn't act right. You know, that person who comes to work happy-go-lucky all the time, and all of a sudden, one day, there's a sudden change. Um, it could be the result of uh, things that are going on in the workplace, them, uh, 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 maybe a change of work assignment, uh, failure to get a promotion, uh, poor evaluations, things like that. And they tend, tend to set some of these uh, individuals off. And, uh, but I tell them, it's, uh, these individuals don't snap. You see it, you, most they of the time you it. see it coming a mile away. It's, just, it's not like the TV show where all of a sudden they come to work one day and they're upset and they pull out a gun and start shooting people. It doesn't happen like that. Most active shooters are upset over a period of time. Things that are happening at work and potentially things that are happening at home. This happens in law enforcement as well. Recently, a police officer committed suicide and um, he was undergoing some, some problems. He uh, had some medical problems. He had some financial problems. He was going through divorce. And from what I understand, he had a couple of weapons in, in his car that were not uh, uh, provided by the police department. 
and uh, but it, fortunately he didn't go into the workplace and start assaulting people. He only he only assaulted himself. But it's pretty it's it's prevalent out there, and uh, it's it's usually uh, it's been found that um, active shooter situations result from workplace violence situations. I mean, that's this really some useful inf interesting information. Uh, so back to our customers. Uh, say that there were some violence that broke out in one of our community centers. How do what what do we suggest to our customers in dealing with those kinds of situations? Well, when the customers, our, our purpose is to make sure that our customers are safe, our employees are safe, mm -hmm. and uh, any other visitors who who come to our workplaces are safe. Um, we advise them if they see something, say something. Mm -hmm. um, we've been providing this information to uh, our employees as well, um, because we're all responsible. Uh, you can't hold, just just can't hold security res solely responsible mm -hmm. for every situation that occurs, because security is not at every situation. Yeah. So we encourage our employees. And of course, visitors, if you see something that just doesn't look right, and I, I continue to use that, that phrase because those are things that people see and they'll, they'll always say, well, I knew something didn't look right about that, or they weren't acting right. And those are those those should be keys that they should they should look for, um, in addition to those uh, those other triggers that I, that I mentioned earlier. Um, well, okay, so give me an example of some other strange behaviors of, of, of people, maybe in the workplace. Well, an individual who's, like I said, is happy-go-lucky, um, coming to work every day, and then all of a sudden they go into like what what appears to be depressed. state. But what if state. a person is not happy-go-lucky? Well, then um, just just look for changes. Look mm -hmm. for any kinds of kinds of changes. Um, if they become uh, verbally abusive suddenly when they weren't when they weren't. Um, Things that they've gone through at work being uh, placed on suspension for some reason, or like I said before, um, a poor evaluation, uh, change in job. It's, you know, if they're if they're doing have uh, one job responsibility, and you change it, they become unhappy with that particular change. Then you may notice that. Um, those are those are just some signs and yeah. things to look for. So just say for example, an organization is going through major reorganizations, and you have a lot of employees not happy. Well, <laughs> there again, um, if if they uh, display uh, some signs that that they are unhappy to the point where they uh, may become aggressive or verbally abusive or or uh, um, just um, just not cooperating at work, um, there there are just so many signs. Um, but what I tell people for is just. Honestly, just look for the look for something that just doesn't look right. Or listen to what they say, things that they they talk about. We've had uh, individuals who talk about who become fascinated with weapons suddenly mm -hmm. that were not fascinated with weapons before, but at the same time they're going through some some changes at, at work. Mm -hmm. Then we tell people to keep an eye on that um, and report it. Okay. Uh, we tell them tell them to report it to the manager, report it to a supervisor, or report it to security. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, Tony. Um we're about to uh, close this segment. We greatly appreciate the information that you've provided that would be most useful for our customers and our employees. Are there any additional tips that you want to, to give our viewers? Well, just, um, just remember that um, everybody's responsible for safety here at MLGW. And uh, if you see something, say something is our slogan, and uh, we pretty much stand behind that. And we, security, just understand that security will investigate anything that's brought to our attention. And we don't necessarily get back with the individual who did the reporting. Um, there's the whistleblower hotline that they can call as well. And, uh, but we don't bring attention to them once they give us information. Okay, so they can, their anonymity is protected. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Again, and, that, and they can, they can call us at, um, uh, 729-8526, which What's is that our, number again? that's 729-8526, okay. which is our security dispatch number, or 320-1579, um, which is uh, the security office. Okay. Again, thank you so much for sh um, giving us and providing us with this most helpful, useful information. Thank you, Tony. At MLG and W, we're working hard to make your life simpler. With our new prepay option, you have the flexibility to choose when you pay your bill. Pay a little each week or once a month. You're in control. 
And with Prepay's simple-to-use interface, you can initiate payments, set balance alerts, and track your balance and usage in real time. Plus, with Prepay, there are no late fees, deposits, or reconnection fees. Avoid any end-of-month surprises with MLG and W's Prepay system. Come into a location and sign up today. Welcome back to Memphis Light, Gas, and Waters, Power Up Memphis. On this segment of the show, we will be talking with Josh Davis, who is the Supervisor of Revenue Protection at Memphis Light, Gas, and Water. And we're going to focus on scams. Uh, um, we have um, been getting a lot of calls and complaints from customers about scams. Um, you know, people asking them to pay on green dot cards or their utilities will be cut off or on social media if you pay half of your bill then we will pay the other half and it's just so many scams out there that um, that our customers are fall prey to so can we can we just go into some of uh, the scams that you deal with in revenue protection Josh sure okay uh, one of the uh, main things that we've noticed is, of course, the Green Dot Money Pack scam, and mm -hmm. that's where uh, our utility customers are getting these threatening phone calls saying, if you don't come in and pay your bill in the next 30 minutes, we're going to come and cut your utility services off. And then they're instructing so, our... Go ahead. Okay. Uh, when you said... The, uh, when, we, when we talk about the Green Dot, that's a credit card, right? Yeah, it's like a debit card. You go to Walgreens or CVS, mm -hmm. you buy the card, you load the money on it, okay. and then they're requesting, the scammers are requesting you contact them back with the code off the back of that card. That's how they're transferring that money from that card to their <laughs> bank account. But that's, that's nothing like Gas and Water would ever request. No, no. We would never call our customers and demand payment over the phone. We send you a cutoff notice in the mail every month when you're past due, and it has a due date on that cut off notice as to where when and where you need to and by what time you need to pay your bill but in addition to our residential customers some of our business customers have also fallen prey to those kinds of calls and while they're doing business they are they get really concerned because they don't want their businesses cut off while they have while they're doing business right and i would instruct our customers to to say that you know if they're a commercial customer uh, you know, they shouldn't be, they already know how much their bill is based on what we send through them to the mail. Or they can get on my account online and look and see what their balance is if they're set up on Metavante. Well, it's good that you mentioned that because in the past, Josh, some of these scammers, when they call our customers, they know the exact amount that the customer owes. How is that right. possible? And I'm, I'm not sure how they're linked mm -hmm. in to that information at this point in time. Mm -hmm. uh, everything that I've checked internally, mm -hmm. uh, we're okay with no hacks on firewalls or anything. You know, our, our data network is very secure. Um, so I'm not sure how they're getting that information. We don't know if they're getting that through uh, an internal source, perhaps, like an individual. Oh, okay. Or, but I know uh, that in the past we we've gotten media calls where they said that you know customers got these calls and people know, you know, what the balance is. Exactly. I've I've had a lot of people contact my office with that same information. And so when customers hear that, that they tend to believe or give some legitimacy to the calls. Right. I would instruct my all of our customers uh, at MLG and W mm -hmm. if they are skeptical about that amount of money that they owe to please just hang up that phone call, turn around and call 544-6549, which mm -hmm. is our residential contact center or our commercial call center out at uh, the Netters building who can instruct them on what they actually owe on their account. Okay, so what are some other scams that our customers need to be aware of? They also need to be aware, I've seen some of them on social media, Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Twitter, Instagram, maybe some things like that, that where they're saying, you know, hey, I can help you pay your MLG and W bill, give me a $150 startup fee, mm -hmm. and I'll take care of the rest. But what that person needs is our customer's MLG and W account number and password that goes to that account number to make that payment online. Mm -hmm. That's what they're actually doing is our customers are being victimized by handing them cash money 
and then somebody behind the scenes goes and pays their bill with stolen credit card or debit card information, which is a criminal act, okay? okay? And I want our customers to be aware that the only person that needs to be paying their bill is them. Yeah. Uh, we have five community offices where you can come in and pay your uh, money that you owe. We also have our Medavante system set up online where you can make payments through that, where our customers specifically, individually, have to set up their own password to their account. Okay, so they can call in yep. and make those payments online, or they can do them through my account. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is mlgw.com and set up my account on right. there. Right. But they can also pay by calling in, right? Correct. Yep. Okay. Yes. And so those are uh, those are the ways that we our customers need to consider paying. Yes. But they do not <laughs> need to to believe anyone who calls them asking for payment. Correct. If you have to pay, if there's an individual who's claiming they're working for any kind of agency or MLG and W and they're demanding cash up front, that's usually a scam and uh, our customers need to stay away from that. Okay, so what about situations where, uh, say, I'm calling you and my number that I'm calling from looks like an MLGW number. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, phone spoofing that goes on where you can, you know, spoof somebody's, uh, some business's phone number. So when it pops up on the person's caller ID, it looks like it's a MLG and W's legitimate number, but it's actually, you're talking to them, you know, through their Magic Jack cell phone or their throwaway cell phone or something like that. I mean, that's all over. Uh, across the country, that's across our entire world. Mm -hmm. uh, phone spoofing is a very active event as well. But it, but but whether it looks like our number or not, right? The, our message is, we are not going to call you. That is correct. For a payment. Right. We're not going to demand that we're going to cut you off if you don't pay by X time or X number of minutes. We don't do that. Right. That is correct. We just send you a cutoff notice through the mail, and it gives you your balance and the day, due date of that cutoff notice. And mm -hmm. if you come in and pay your uh, bill by that time, then, you know, you'll settle up whatever you need to settle up. But if you don't, then we're not going to just call you back and say, hey, we're coming to cut your utilities off either. We're going to have a service order to do that. Okay. So that's just, we do not make those kinds of calls customers. We do not call customers and say, you owe us or we're going to cut you out. We don't do that. We send cut off notices that is correct. through the mail. And now they can call us with their account information, uh, account number and uh, phone numbers that are t tied to their account. And we will work with them or talk with them about their accounts. Right. But we're not going to initiate the call. Correct. Correct. Okay. So for customers who fall prey to these scammers and do pay what the scammers ask for, how is that handled when it comes to their bill? Well, my, my office investigates all those claims. Uh, what I will tell our utility customers is, is if they fall victim to a scam like that, mm -hmm. they need to contact their local law enforcement jurisdiction, file a police report. Mm -hmm and then fill out, come into one of our offices and fill out an affidavit of fraudulent utilities, get it notarized mm -hmm. in one of our community offices, and then we'll begin to take a look at that investigation and find out who's responsible. So say, for example, it's a legitimate scam mm -hmm. and a customer has paid $150 and they owe us $300. How does, how, do we, does like we want to work with them on a payment plan or, uh, I mean, they still owe us the money for their use of their utility services, but we right. will work with them on a payment plan But once we learn that it was an actual scam. Yes, any, anybody can call in and work a payment arrangement out on their bill, mm -hmm. uh, but, the, but they're out the $150 or right. however they, much exactly. money that they gave the scam, so they are at a financial loss mm -hmm. personally, and then if that return check or that return credit card payment or whatever mm -hmm. that's fraudulently gets reversed on their, on their account, mm -hmm. then they owe that as well, so that's why we oh, want wow. the police report yeah. filed because we have to uh, show up to court on their behalf in okay. general sessions okay. uh, if an arrest is made based off who we find out is doing that. 
Well, let me ask you this. Do you all have to go to court a lot for those kind of situations? So they they actually catch some of these people? Yes, ma'am, we do. It's our it's our prerogative as revenue protection at Memphis Light, Gas and Water to invest all of those claims uh -huh. for fraud and scam activities. Uh, we take that very seriously at MLGNW. Uh -huh. Uh, and we will assist any local law enforcement agency on those types of investigations and, and supply them with documentation as to what happened on an individual's or on our customer's utility account. Well, do, can, can you remember or think of um, a very large amount that I, any of our customers have actually paid to a scammer? Uh, I remember a couple of customers. I know there was a... Um, a grocery store down off of Scott Street that I think, uh, well, this was a couple of years ago, but they they were involved in the Green Dot Money Pack scam and they were, wow. they uh, had given these people like $1,500. And uh, that's a lot of money for me, that's a lot of money for anybody. But evidently their utility bill is is high in order yeah. for them to even consider paying that kind of money. Right, it was a commercial account, it was a commercial business. And, and they uh, paid fifteen. They bought a green dot card, put right. fifteen hundred dollars on it, and gave the the number on the back of the card to the scammer. Right. And then that money came off that card immediately. Which means if it had come out of their bank account, then the bank might would have reimbursed them for those fees. Right. As opposed to going out and getting something like a green dot card. Right. So, um, wow. Okay. So we are about to close this segment of the show, Josh. Um, are there any tips that you would like to give to our customers, our viewers, before we leave? Sure. I mean, if, the, if our customers would like to contact my office directly, they can give us a call at 322-5741, or they can email us at revenueprotection at mlgw.com. Excuse me. <laughs> mlgw.com. mlgw.com. <laughs> okay. Um, one of the things I w would like to say regarding scams is that if it sounds too good to be true, it is too good to be true. And um, people just aren't giving away money. Um, uh, it, it's too good to be true. So just don't fall for it. And um, thank you very much for watching this segment of our show. I hope that what Josh has, um, the information he's provided has been very helpful and very useful and that you will beware of the scammers. Thank you. And now, here's a power moment to help you better understand how MLGW works to help you, our customer. Today's myth is MLGW will often call its customers demanding payment be made to their account immediately to avoid disconnects. The fact is, while MLGW does mail cutoff notices to our customers, and we use auto dialers alerting customers that a payment must be made by a certain date to avoid cutoff, MLGW service representatives will not personally call a customer to request a payment. We do not call customers and demand that they make payments or they will be shut off. If you receive such a call, you are urged to do the following. Number one, hang up the phone. Number two, never give out your personal financial information over the phone. Number three, call the MLGW Commercial Resource Center at 901-528-4270. That number again is 901-528-4270. 4270. Go to any of the five MLGW community business offices and speak with a counselor if you have problems paying your utility bill. And finally, report it to your local police station if you have been scammed. Thank you.